Yeah, it's finished. Yeah, in terms of the main stint up to the top, up north, it's done. Yeah, so it's uh, it's all downhill from here. Yeah, actually, yeah, and hills with electric bikes aren't great. So um, they do sap power a little bit. Uh, it, it's been... The, the climb coming from sort of uh, out of Kendall up through Carlisle, up to Carlisle, and then up from there into Scotland, you do notice um, when, you, when you're seeing the power go down, you do notice that hill is constant, constant gradient all the way up. Um, so I had to actually stop, make an extra stop. I kind of anticipate I would, um, but it, it was a little bit, you know, seat of your pants thing. But uh, it's been fine. I haven't run, I haven't run out all the planned stops worked uh it's been really good yeah right so the plan was initially it was kind of it came out of a, a flippant comment from a a fellow sort of ev enthusiast who lives not far from me um uh, I'm, I'm in uh, sort of warwickshire and this guy's in leicestershire and we were chatting and um there's an there's an electric vehicle meet um, there was in in Orkney uh, back in May. There's a guy in Orkney who's quite a big advocate and a, and a seller of EVs across the country. Actually, um, sounds odd that he's based in Orkney, but Orkney produces more electricity than they can actually use. So they've even gone down the route of uh, creating hydrogen from it now, so they can just use it. They can't they can't export it to the national grid because of where they are. So. Orkney's quite a big focus for renewables at the moment. And this chap held a, held a, a meet-up on, in May, uh, Jonathan Porterfield, his name is, and um, he invited up the actor Robert Llewellyn, who's quite a big uh, EV advocate as well. And uh, so Robert went up, this chap I know, James, James Coates went up, and James asked if I was going to go up. I said, I can't really, family-wise and other commitments, I couldn't really make it at the time. So I, I flippantly said, hey, maybe I'll just go up next year from Land's End, you know, and ride up to John O'Groats and then up, up to Orkney. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to Orkney, my brother lives on Shetland. It's just a, a logical step up is just to go up to Shetland and just go to the top of uh, Shetland, which is a, a place called Score. Um, there's a beach at Score in, in, on the island of Unst. So it started formulating in my head and I just thought, I wonder if anyone's actually done this before. Um, and I just did some quick searches for it on google well i say quick i looked into it quite extensively i couldn't find any mention of somebody having done lands into john O'Groats on an electric motorcycle and i thought well this is going to be the future ultimately you know um hey wouldn't it be cool to be the first person to do it and then i thought well there might be it's an emerging technology so there aren't many electric motorbikes around at the moment but i probably want to do it sooner rather than later so I had some chats with my wife and she's very understanding and helpful. And she said, yeah, go for it. So James, the chap we're speaking to said, would, well, would you mind the company on the trip? And I said, well, no, if you can, you know, if we can sort out an electric motorbike and um, my dealership street bike in Elso, and they, they kind of said, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll let you borrow the demo uh, electric bike for the trip. And so he could use that and, and come along. And then fam family things got in the way, and uh, yeah, James, James, James's other half was expecting. Uh, we were going to do the trip two months ago. The, the baby was going to be premature, so we postponed it to now. And then the baby went to full term, so <laughs> ultimately James had to pull out, and I, I did it on my own, which was which was the original plan anyway. But. Uh, I mean, he's been help He's been very helpful insofar as he took me down to Lands End in a, in a van, and he's very kindly going to come up and get me uh, tomorrow morning from near Aberdeen. So, you know, I, it would have been a real pain to do it without his help. So he's been he's been very help. You know, very helpful to the project still, despite not being able to come along. Yeah, do you know what? There is a there is like a. A thing called plug share whereby people can put their own if they've got their own personal charge points for electric cars normally you could put them on a map and say you know anyone any any other ev drivers normally because not many people are riding um are welcome to use my charging point 
the national infrastructure for, for car, I, mean, I drive an electric car myself, a, a Nissan Leaf, uh, the, uh, the network is getting better and it, and it will get better now, especially with government announcement about 2040, blah, blah, blah. It is going to get, uh, it is going to get better, but it's still a little bit patchy in places. So this community sort of sprung up where people can share their charge points and it's very much, a, it is a very much, you know, mutual, uh, it's quite a nice community. And so I kind of looked at the, when I was planning the journey, I split the Lands and John O'Groats section into 10 parts uh, of 85 miles because the bike will do around about 100 miles um, mixed roads, which is pretty good. But I thought, well, I'm going to be carrying a lot more weight. Uh, there's enough weight on me, but I wouldn't be carrying even more. And 85 miles is probably sensible per stint. Um, so I kind of looked on the map then at 85 mile intervals. I thought, well, OK, uh, I planned it over four days. The first two days I'll do three stints. The second two days I'll do two stints. So that means the last two will be a bit more relaxed and enjoyable. I'll be in Scotland, so I'll be able to appreciate them a bit more. Um, so I, I looked for places I could charge during the day for, the, you know, for, for both first two days. Um, and, and they were like, typically the first one was a place in Oakhampton, a uh, B&B, and, and they're big, e, um, big EV advocates and uh, renewable advocates. They got uh, a large B&B &B place, which is, they've got solar PV on the roof, they've got heat exchange heating, they've got battery storage. Um, in fact, they were telling me that they, the national grid won't let them put any more solar on the roof because they can't handle the, the export from them. So <laughs> it's quite telling. Um, and then basically the, the, the stop overnight was just a case of, you know, find, find a and b, &B where I could just plug in and, and just charge it from, well, it takes nine hours to charge overnight, you know, so um, I only need one socket to do that. So uh, every, everyone was great. No, nobody said, oh, no, you, know, you can't do that. You know, when I told them it's it's just over a pound, really, to charge it, um, you know, it, it's not really an issue, especially when you say you're doing it for charity. It's it's kind of, you know, there's it's quite a motive, motivation of people. And it's something original, you know. Um, yeah, so the... the the initial one is um, blood bikes. Um, I'm a observer for the for the my local Coventry Warwickshire Advanced Motorcyclist Group. So uh, there's a lot of people in that group who are uh, also blood bikers. And blood bikes, uh, what that is, it's a network of of advanced riders who offer a service to the NHS, which the NHS doesn't have um, overnight. And it's basically delivering uh, blood samples, tissue samples, X-rays, any anything that's required urgently from one hospital to to another and it's, it's quite a big network there's a lot of people in the club involved in it they give up a lot of their their time and they're all they're always fundraising they always need more funds they've got to main they've got to maintain a fleet of motorcycles so um it seemed very worthwhile and appropriate given my interests uh, charity to support then the other the other charity doing it for is uh, is tommy's which was um which is actually James's choice because of what his, he and his wife have recently gone through at Tommy's are a pregnancy support group. Um, he could talk more about that than I could, but uh, I know they've been very good to him and I, I wanted to honour that because, you know, we'd, we'd said that in, in, the, in the initial instance, we'd said we were going to support Tommy's and, yeah, quite right, we should, we should continue to do so. Yeah, it's quite a weird feeling, actually. Uh, just meek and mild <laughs> me doing something that's it's a first. Uh, the thing that struck me when I got there yesterday morning was, and I think I mentioned I mentioned it on one of the video things I posted. I think you know this is going to be commonplace in the future. Dri riding an electric motorcycle up there is going to be it's going to be perfectly normal. At the moment, it's a bit of a challenge, and I. I it was funny when I set off from Land's End on Friday morning. There was a there was just one woman there near the post. I thought I've got to set off from the proper point, start point. Uh, there was one woman there who was taking photos and I said, well, would you mind taking a photo of me near the post with the bike? And she said, no, not at all. And she said, you're doing what I think you're doing. And I said, yeah. And she said, oh, I've just seen my husband off. He's cycling up. And I said to her, yeah, that makes me feel like I'm doing, it's a real cop out what I'm doing. You know, I'm just riding, <laughs> riding a, a, a propelled vehicle up there. But in the event, 
it was it was a challenge you know it wasn't as easy as i thought it was going to be it was more enjoyable than i thought it was going to be but it, it was it was ultimately a challenge yeah not a physical i mean i'm not great at physical challenges but it, it, it was a, a challenge you know all around and it was it was a it was quite an odd feeling like i say yesterday morning I think, i'm the first to do this on an electric vehicle it must have been like the first person to drive a car from you know a, an internal combustion engine car from Land's End to, to, to well, I don't know if they did to score, but uh, but yeah, it, it is quite an odd odd feeling really. Uh, it, it was it was yeah the organisation was a bit would have, was a bit of a faff, but like I say, everyone was really agreeable. Um, Every, nobody said no when I contacted them, so I just I just looked at those 85 mile stints and said, right, round about here, try this place, round about here, try this place. I did have some initial, I, I had planned the routes on a slightly different basis at some point, and I, I did struggle to find anywhere that could let, that had the possibility to let me charge for whatever reason on my initial route. So all I did was vary the routes slightly. I was going to go through uh, Runcorn initially. Um, and instead, I just I just moved the route over to uh, Warrington area, and the first pub I contacted in Warrington was kind of it wasn't in a high street or anything. It was a little bit out of the way, so you know that it was a, it was far more easier prospect for them to 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 help me out, uh, and they did. I think it will get easier just simply because uh, the electric motorbike at the moment doesn't have the rapid charging capability that cars, the, the electric cars have. You know, if I, if I drive my car somewhere, I can I can charge it up in half an hour and it's it's dead easy. You know, I've, I've actually driven down last summer to Land's End from uh, from Warwickshire and all the, all the way around Devon and all over the place. And you can do those journeys fairly easily in an electric car now because the rapid infrastructure is is getting better all the time and um so it's just a case of stopping you know toilet break coffee whatever uh, and you carry on with the electric motorcycles at the moment they don't have that um, dc rapid charging capability so it's it's standard sockets is the way to go and you have to carry it my my top box i've got on the back of the bike is not the normal top box I have on it. I actually took it off the petrol bike I have uh, because it was big enough to carry the two extra charges, which are big, heavy things. Um, and that, and that, on the face of it, that is that's kind of ridiculous. You know, it, it, you just look at it and think, well, no, it's it's got to progress from this, and it and it will. Um, to be fair to the manufacturer Zero, they did initially put um, they did initially put rapid charging capabilities into the bike. The problem they had was when they took it out in California, where they made they found that the uh, charging points wouldn't support motorcycles. They weren't set up to do that, even though the, the official specifications of the, you know, the uh, the machines they were making, they should have been, they should have allowed them to work with uh, electric motorcycles. The reality was um, they didn't. So they they quickly pulled them out of the bikes and said, well, we can't do it because if somebody turns up to charging point, it doesn't work. They're not, they're not going to blame the charging point manufacturers. They're going to blame them. The bike manufacturers so they just went back to um, standard AC charging but that something will have to happen along those lines to uh, to make faster charging far more easy um, they do offer a where the tank is on the, on the bike is just a, like a storage compartment because obviously there's no petrol nothing to, nothing to be there um, so there is a sort of storage bag at the moment and you can there is an optional extra uh, to put in a like a car charging point there, which again will bring the the charging down to uh, around about three hours. It's still too long. Uh, it's just we've got to be realistic about these things. It's still too long, um, and it's quite expensive to do that. So in this case, the dealership street bike were very very kind enough to get me the uh, to get to borrow the uh, the fast chargers if you like from Zero in the Netherlands, and that did to take the journey if i'd had to charge for nine hours as i normally do it, i just wouldn't have done the trip it's as simple as that they'll have to they'll have to come well the government decision has got to be welcomed you know um 
and a lot of people are stressing about that as though they're just going to stop they're going to ban fossil fuels outright you know that's not what they've said they have said new vehicles very very specifically new vehicles from 2040 will have to be you know zero emission so you know it, it's going to give the, the the manufacturers a kick up the backside which they probably needed although the likes of tesla are pretty much showing the way to automotive manufacturers and, and clearly they've set the bar and they said look this is what you can do and that was if you speak to elon musk if you followed him for years that's all that was always his intention was to say this is what you can do get your acts together and it, it was more a thing you know, he, he offered out all the patents to he open sourced everything said this is how we've done it go ahead and make zero emissions cars which is ultimately what his main interest was i think more so than actually doing the car company i think space is still his big his big love first love uh so the man yeah if the manufacturers don't supply um realistically if they don't supply sort of sufficiently good rapid charging i think it will be a slow process to convert people from uh petrol to electric having said that uh it's very much a word of mouth thing i've found so as soon as you've got friends family who experience the realities of living with an electric vehicle they kind of get it and they kind of get the fact that actually instead of having to go to this place to fill up with fuel it's actually quite good that i just put the car plug it in at night and the next morning i've got a full tank um that's actually quite good and so it swings and roundabouts you know and when you're talking about running costs um fewer mechanical things to go wrong it's great yeah i haven't broken down in the car for three years um so yeah no oil to worry about <laughs> I'd followed it for a while, I'd followed the developments of them. Um, I, w I was forever thinking, well, it's not quite there yet, it's not quite there yet. And following that Robert Llewellyn chap I mentioned on uh, his YouTube channel, Fully Charged, I was watching that for quite a long time. Uh, I was watching developments with Tesla, thinking, well, it's all, you know, I'm an ordinary person, I haven't got, I'm not wealthy by any, by any stretch of the imagination. but. When, when it came to the point where the second generation Nissan Leaf came out, I thought, well, they've made several, they've made, I think they made over a hundred improvements over the first generation. I thought, well, okay, they've obviously tweaked things. Yeah, when I can get one of those pre-owned at a reasonable price, that's probably the time to jump in. So, so that's what I did. And in a strange way, if you, if you go down the pre-owned route, because there's still a little bit of unwarranted, I think, uh, worry about batteries, um, they do tend to depreciate from new fairly quickly, which is great from a, from the point of view of somebody buying one second hand because you know you can pick up a bargain. Uh, so th there's several Leafs now available uh, under ten thousand pounds that are they're just, they're just great cars. You know, there's no two ways about it. If you if you ex if you experience one over a, a few days, you know, a couple of days, you just you you'll get it. I offered him, I said to him, do you want to have a go on it, on the bike? And he said, no. And he looked at me dead straight at it and he said, no. I said, why not? And he said, because I want one. <laughs> and, I, and I thought that was, that was quite, that was quite telling though. And it was quite, it was quite, I was quite, I was quite appreciative of him saying it, you know, I thought, well, it's quite honest, you know. Um, yeah, the, the talk is, is pretty good on them. Um, if you if you like talk, you you like electric bikes. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, it's never done it for me anyway. So I'm, maybe I'm a strange biker in that respect. It's the experience of riding that I enjoy, not the sound of it. You know, I, I don't. I'm not interested in being ostentatious just for the sake of it. I'm not interested in trying to impress with. What I consider now, I'm quite, I'm quite, I'm quite forward-looking in terms of technology. I like new technology. I like advances. And to me, looking at an internal combustion engine, while I appreciate it, I appreciate classic vehicles, that kind of thing. It's, it's getting long in the tooth now, and there are better options out there. And that's not to say that I don't think, um, I don't think classic vehicles should go. I think they should have be, be around still. And in fact. If we can get more mainstream driving, riding away from 
fossil fuel is going to free up more of that for, you know, pleasure, which would be a good thing. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think in that respect, it's, it was more of a, it was more of a technology thing that, that drove me. I don't miss the, like I say, I don't miss the sound at all. When you when you're riding a bike anyway, anyone who rides a bike knows the main thing you hear is wind noise. You usually got wind. You usually got earplugs in, uh, so you don't really hear the a normal bike too much unless you've got really loud pipes on them. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't miss that at all. No, in fact, I quite like the sound of the the, the bike when you because it's got regenerative braking. If, as it's as it's slowing down, you get quite a nice. Um, it's almost like a jet sound or a, or a lift stopping. It's it's quite a nice sound, and I, I do actually prefer that. <laughs> Okay, well, high points of the journey in terms of, uh, I'd say were, were people actually. It was nice to meet lots of people. The good thing about stopping for three hours was that I got to talk to people properly over an extended period. I met um, I met some fascinating people, the people at the B&B &B in Oakhampton, all the way up, every, everywhere I stopped, I met really nice people. Um, the two that really stick in mind are the last stop on the mainland coming up uh, the Caithness coast. I stopped at a really nice little pub, um, charged there for three hours and was just stood at the bar and this old chap, Donnie, came up to me, really nice bloke, and just got chatting and asked me what I was doing. And he, was, um, he, he had been a nuclear uh, electrician, uh, you know, before he retired. And he was, he was fascinated by the bike and we got chatting about all sorts, you know, just things in general. Then his mate Billy turned up. These were two like local characters by the by the sound of things, uh, and they're extremely hospitable. Uh, uh, Donny, in fact, was telling me what I was doing. And he before he went, he shoved twenty pounds in my hand. This, that's for your charity, which I thought was great of him, you know. And uh, but they, they they you know struggling to buy them a drink was was unbelievable. Yeah, forget what people say about Scottish people being me. These guys would not let me buy them a drink. And if anyone knows the Father Ted episode with Mrs. Doyle in the tea shop, it was exactly like that. I said I said that to the barman. This is like Father Ted. And, you know, put your money away, you know, it's no good. <laughs> yeah, so so pe people were the, were the main thing. Scotland, because, I think because the weather brightened up when I crossed the border into Scotland. Um, and I, I was taking a sh the shortest route rather than the quickest. So it was, there was a lot of single track riding through the islands, which was fantastic, beautiful scenery, beautiful weather. Um, so landscape secondary and yeah, came through some great places, especially, uh, especially the highlands and coming up the, the east coast there. That was great. Yes, I haven't personally, no. Um, I've been abroad a lot on, you know, petrol bike and things, but I haven't. Uh, I know the infrastructure in certain parts of mainland Europe is 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 very good. Um, well, Norway is by far and away the the leader in that, but that, partly because they have a hundred percent sales tax on um, internal combustion engine vehicles, so you're suddenly looking at double the cost, which makes the likes of the Tesla quite a viable proposition, especially with all that you know they get term free ferries and there's loads of incentives to for them to use uh, renewables and i think i'm right in saying you might have to check this uh, all they had like 25 percent sale of vehicles were full electric um this year which is pretty impressive so so norway's leading the way the netherlands have put i know they've put rapid charging points all the way around their their motorway network and they're actually in they're actually enclosed they're covered so um, I've, I saw those earlier earlier in the year when I was over there. Um, France is doing quite a bit. I think generally it's catching on. Um, Germany seems to be a bit of a. I think they were very cynical and waiting to see how things were happening, but now Germany seems to be on board as well. So it, it, is, it is starting to happen everywhere. I think. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I know I do know of people who have. Um, taking electric cars abroad um, and they've just gone through the tunnel uh, especially uh, t with a Tesla it's, a no it's dead easy you know the, the charge points are everywhere so uh, in fact James who's going to do the trip with me he's 
the first they picked up they they own Tesla Tesla him and his him and his other half Kate and the first thing they did when they got the car was drive to Switzerland as you do. That would be great, you know. If, if that happens, then that's fantastic. All I say to people is keep an open mind about it. Go and go and have a test drive or test ride, whatever. And I think everyone who does that will be very pleasantly surprised at uh, the, the, the whole experience. It's not like driving a milk float or riding a milk float. It's they're very very responsive vehicles, very quiet, assuring, very solid. Um, yeah, uh, and a lot of the EV manufacturers now will give you an extended um, test drive or, or test ride, you know, so you can, it's not, you don't just have it for a couple of hours, you can have it over a weekend or something like that.